Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Uh, if you're into nitro engines, vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, please like and subscribe. So I think I've decided. I took the SHPT21AO out of my Kyosho MP9 TKI2 and uh, to do you know cleaning and maintenance on it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to put it back in or not. Uh, and so I was thinking about it, you know, what engines do I want to run? Uh, right now, my main goal is running the Force Pro 21. I have that broken in, uh, and I'm waiting an opportunity to take it to the track and check it out. Uh, so my other buggy, I uh, had that, you know, PT21AO in it. I took that out. And, all right, what can I get? What, what is there anything I have that you know is in line waiting for a shot uh to be checked out in the buggy and uh yes i remembered the old uh pt 2009 xb extreme rc mods modded version um that i had refurbished uh, it was pretty much cached when i got it uh, needed a pinch, uh, needed uh, refinish the head button, and needed new bearings. Uh, needed completely redone, uh, and that has been done. Uh, should uh, I think uh, at least ha has a good shot of running uh, good now. And uh, like I mentioned before, when I was making this video, I have never ran a modded engine in one of my buggies at the track, so I'd be interested. Uh, to see the performance. So, uh, I decided to throw that in, so I swapped over the motor mounts. I took the motor mounts off the 21AO, and I threw them here on the 2009. Um, and I was getting ready to just throw it in, and I'm like, hey, hold on a second. You know, let me make a video. We can. There's a couple things we can discuss. So, uh, clutch selection is where I'm at now, all right? So I pulled out my old clutch box, and I have yet to do uh, my clutch collection slash talk on clutches video. Uh, I've tried to make it a couple times. Uh, it gets really long, and you know what? Uh, it was a long time ago when I started to make it, and you know, an hour long video. Uh, it just seemed to me like that was way too long, but. Uh, over the last couple months, I've made a few videos that were quite long. I guess that's just how I make videos. Uh, so, um, I'm going to give it another try uh, to go through. But, uh, good Lord, there's just so much to talk about with clutches. Um, I, I had discussed before this Orion uh, CRF V6 clutch, uh, six shoe clutch. And I love this clutch. I ran this clutch for a long time. Uh, but, you know, the issue with that is you can't really find shoes for it anymore. Uh, I'm not going to get real into the clutch thing, but uh, so here's what I wanted to, a couple things I wanted to say. So we have basically settled upon the. Low C style four shoe clutch as uh, like your basic uh, general clutch. Most people run something very similar to that. Uh, the low C style four shoe clutch. Uh, this one has two composite and two aluminum shoes on it. And those composites looking pretty low. Anyways. Uh, and I certainly run plenty of these clutches. I've probably got, heck, there's a, this I believe is an aftermarket one. Those are a couple of the original Losi. It's in a, a steel and an aluminum four shoe flywheel. Um, I've ran this style of clutch ton, a ton, right? Um, the point I'm trying to make is you, you don't really have to have uh, a modern clutch right I'm gonna put on this and I had started to put I found this set I kind of uh, this this set was on an engine that I bought 
there's a lot of bags in here that are like clutch sets that were taken off of things. So like it's a flywheel, the shoes and the springs. They're like uh, used, used cl clutch sets that have been removed from things. Right? That's a slider right there. Um... So I pulled this one out, and I think this one was close to new. Looks like, uh, no, yeah, it's never been used. Got a little scratching, I guess, from installing it, that one. But, I mean, there's where it would rub. So this is a brand new clutch set that came on an engine that I bought. Uh, and I was going to just use it, throw those aluminum shoes on. But then I was thinking, uh, I'm going to go old school old school on this thing not just uh, a three shoe but i'm gonna throw some composite shoes on there now i, I want to discuss a second composite and aluminum shoes right so aluminum shoes are supposed to be like an upgrade right uh, a lot of cars when they came with these clutches uh, came with the composite shoes and then you could buy uh, the aluminum shoes for an upgrade. I personally, uh, number one, you get great life. It's not like they wear uh, much faster. Uh, their performance, okay, you get a little snappier bottom end, I guess. Uh, they bite harder, quicker, right? But... I tell you what, the composites. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna install these composites here, and we will check this engine out. And I tell you what, uh, to me, the springs are so so much more important than the shoes. Um, a good firm spring is what uh, really does it for me with a clutch. Uh, and also even uh, orientation, leading versus trailing, right? A lot of people like, oh, your clutch goes uh, with the clutch shoes, uh, the pin leading the shoe, right? Uh, or with the pin trailing the shoe. I've installed them both ways. Uh, I t I'll be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference. Um, but spins that way so so the pin is leading the shoe right spins that direction uh, well these are not tight on the pins but got a little bit of resistance let me see another one yeah those are a touch tight on there i don't know if it's enough to be concerning that'll really just help it uh grab or help the the spring a little bit all right let's try to throw these on here well i don't even completely lost what i was talking about um composite versus aluminum composite work fine for me i like composite shoes So, you want to set your spring and your clutch, you know, lined up together with the toy, the, it would go straight down, but you can't put it straight down because you got to do the spring. So, you got to try to put it on far down as you can, and you push with one hand, and the spring went by. Always, uh, my excuse for everything is that I'm doing it at an odd angle out here in front of me. There we go. And take a screwdriver and just bring the clutch shoe and set it down into the groove. There, you see how that is now. A lot of stuff with nitro engines, right, is feel and sound. 
right? You gotta you gotta develop an ear for tuning, right? You gotta be able to listen to your engine and know what it needs. Clutch springs, I can't tell you. Now I could say, uh, yeah, these shoes here that I'm using, uh, I believe they're 1.1s one uh, or ones. They're certainly not 0.9s. Let's see. They're ones. They're point one point oh uh, springs. But that doesn't tell you the whole story. Um, different. Uh, there's different styles of spring. Um, it, it's a feel. When I put a shoe on. And I take and, and pull it out, right? I I know the feel that I'm looking for. And that is lovely, by the way. Maybe even a touch firm. Uh, a, a touch too strong, that spring. That, that's got a really good grip on there. Let me go ahead and uh, throw a second one on here. Yep, in the groove. Give it a, and also you, you're 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 feeling right the spring, but also uh, you're making sure that it uh, freely comes right back. All right, third shoe. And you see that anytime I like and mess with engines, I like to go ahead and throw caps on them just so I don't got to worry about stuff flying in the engine. All right, let's see if we can get our third one on here. Got to squeeze it by the other one. There we go. Put that spring around back. Not too bad, huh? All right. So now I can't really get my nail in there that it's all three. So I'll take my flat blade screwdriver. Just give them a flick and a feel. Good. Those are really solid. Uh, really, uh, really strong springs on there. This this clutch it may even be a touch heavy. Um, you know what? I'm starting to think here now. I haven't ran. Uh, I I love the three shoe composite, but it's been a while since I ran it, so I'm I'm kind of remembering now. Uh, the composite shoes are lighter than the aluminum shoes. So, uh, you, you kind of need a lighter, a little bit lighter of a spring, uh, cause the, the lighter the shoe, uh, the less centrifugal force is going to pull it outward. Um, it, it, it may be, it may be, a, this may be a little too tight, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it just, uh, for experimentation purposes. Uh, it's not going to, that right there, uh, having the, the springs too tight, this, the engine will have to rev too much before it takes off. Uh, it kind of messes with your low speed driving. Um, but for what I want to check out, I really just want to you know check the top end on this and uh, a lot of high speed driving, you know, gunning it. Uh, so, 
I think that clutch will be fine uh, just for testing. Uh, I don't feel like re redoing it. All right. So we got our clutch shoes on. Got our clutch put together. Oh, let me put that back in there. I think that was in that one. And I'm going to keep these together. Although I got a ton of different. Probably got the exact same shoe right there. Yep, exact same one. Uh, keep these together because they were together, so I'll keep them together. All right, get that out of the way. All right, so we got our clutch on. Uh, this right here is the clutch bell that was with that new clutch set. Um... It's a 13 tooth as well. Um, you, you, you don't want to run a clutch bell too long, right? To where uh, it's got a lot of wear on it because then it can start damaging your spur gear and your buggy. And you don't want that. That's a lot bigger hassle to change uh, and more expensive of a part. Um, so, but I tell you what. This one, it's close. You know what? I'm not going to be running this thing long. Uh, this is really just for testing. It's not like I'm going to be running this for a while. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and reuse that clutch bell. Um, all right, where are... I got some... Go ahead and use... I mean, these are, these are some good-looking bearings uh, that are in here. Uh, they're brand new, so, oh, they're in there pretty good, there we go, one, two, wonder what kind, uh, of clutch belt bearings those are they were on a uh it was on a good engine it was on an over Aussie and uh, it had been sitting for a long time so they're vintage you know i almost want to save them <laughs> because of that but i don't really know exactly what they are all right so uh setting up this portion so the the first thing you want to check uh, see what kind of shimming you need. So I always like to have at least one shim uh, below the lower bearing. If I can get one out of here. Come on, man. Here we go. All right. So let me put one shim there and then throw my clutch bell on. So that looks good. You want to make sure that your clutch bell is covering the shoes. Uh, you don't want uh, the clutch bell sitting like that to where you have some shoe sticking out at the bottom. That is possible. That does happen. Um, we're good there. We're covering up the clutch shoes. Uh, spinning freely. Uh, so now what I wanted to check, before I go ahead and start uh, locking this onto here, I want to get my buggy and, and see how it lines up. I may need to adjust that bell in a certain direction. Uh, I may even need to put a whole new flywheel and clutch on it if it's sticking out too far. Let me grab the Kyosho. I think I'm going to put the 2035 pipe back on it. Um, this engine is very similar to the newer SH. Uh, and that engine loves the pipe. So I think it'd be a good choice for something that I, I should know uh, should work okay. All right, so I'm going to put the buggy, put the engine where it sits. 
in the engine and it looks like I could do with so the way it is it sits now in the buggy let's say the clutch bell was locked into this position here uh, the spur is sitting right at uh, what can I do for a visual aid yeah I'll use that uh, the, the spur gear oop. <laughs> spur gear is sitting so let's pretend that this here is the, the spur gear it's sitting basically perfectly lined up you see that uh, on the, at, at the, this end of this clutch bell right uh, so what I want to do is move this up put a couple shims behind it to move this out a bit to where it's not right on the edge it's actually fully uh, which way am I talking about it's it needs to come out yeah it's right it's right on that edge so if I bring it up it'll be into uh, it won't be right on the edge of it it'll be catching all the meat so, I'm going to go ahead and put another shim or two behind the clutch bell. That will move the clutch bell out a little bit, and I'll get a better grip on my spur gear. Oh, these shims are hard to get out of there. All right. There's a couple shims. Put it on there. Make sure we're st still spinning good. So now I'm, I'm still going to have, you see that sticking out there? I still got a little play that if I just stick a, a nut on there, I'll have some play. So how much play is it? Is it that much? Uh... You know what, I bet you if I remove one of those from behind it, that's why I had three behind it, let me switch to two behind it. Yeah, there's the third one. Two behind it. Now I can take this wide one and I believe, where is, uh, bits are in there, the nut, so take the nut with its washer, and let's see, throw that on, this may be too tight mm, I tell you what that is good and tight that is perfect ladies and gentlemen uh, you want just you, you want it to have just like uh, with you want to have a tick right in your gear mesh right uh you want to have it to have you don't want it to be locked solid you want to have a little bit of movement but i don't know about that sound is that those bearings in there maybe needed uh those have been sitting for a while maybe you need you should put a drop of oil on them those are some older bearings But I'm talking, uh, you know, my shimming is perfect, right? It's got just a little tick, but it still spins perfectly freely. All right. Uh, and let me go ahead and double check and make sure. Yep, I'm lined up good. My spur gear 
uh, sits right in the middle here. So I got all the meat catching. Uh, the next thing I do uh, before uh, going further is see where I need to put my throttle uh, linkage. So let me try to put this where you can see it. So I look for where my throttle linkage wants to go and it is right there. You want your throttle link to be perfectly level. You don't want it to go up. You don't want it to go down. You want it to go perfectly straight. So when I see it perfectly straight, looks like I need basically uh, to have my throttle arm uh, coming straight out this way and it, it cocked down just a hair. So I am going to Go ahead and unlock this and straight that way and then cock it down a touch. So right about there, let me lock that in place and see, put the engine where it goes, All right there is where the engine goes and uh booyah looks like that will go right on you see go right on and my arm will stay level uh, does it need to go up a touch i mean where's level at really level okay up just a touch. I, I, I like I like this to be perfect. You don't uh, uh, it's it's bad on your servo. Uh, it's bad on your carburetor on your slide. Uh, the straighter the pull, the better. So now that I have this lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this arm. If I can, there we go. All right. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that nice straight line. And then I'll I'll uh, set my carburetor. Once I get the car the engine locked in place, I'll uh, adjust my carburetor in the throat. All right, so linkage is set up. We got the clutch on. Let me move that out of the way. Uh, yeah, I said I will be. Uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and throw the motor mount screws in. Now I uh, I took the all the mounts out. Uh -oh. Did I put those on backwards? Will that? I need to move it, slide it that way. Uh, let's just see how this is going to work. Let me throw a couple of these in. Those motor mounts, uh, I may have put them on reversed. Um, I don't know if that's going to cause a problem or even if I did. Uh, so we'll see. There, you know, one on each side of the uh, engine. It wasn't uh, obvious which way they went. All right, so the engine needs to come closer to the spur gear, or is it? Oh, okay, uh, a little bit more of a tick than I like. You go ahead and put. Yeah, it just should just need a little adjustment. Uh, it's not way off like it was looking like it was going to be. Uh, still sounds good. Oh, yeah. All right. 
engine in, gear mesh set, throttle linkage set. Uh, and the other reason why I, I like to throw the 2035 right back in here is because uh, my pipe hanger is set up and ready for it. Because it was just in here on the other SH. Put that there. And take this cap off of here. Drop my cap. Where did it go? Yeah, I'll get it later. All right. Throw our pipe on. Right on the hanger. And I should have a spring handy when I just took off. If not, I got plenty in here. There's one. I always like to do the bottom hole. Uh, I'll use that one, I guess, until uh, it gets too worn to use. Um... I think the uh, the bottom hole uh, holds it into the better position where I like it to be, down low out of the way. Uh, go ahead and lock that in place. Kind of got it. There we go. All right, all right, our pipe is on, uh, I guess now, all right, so now, oh, here, something good, I'm glad I remember, and that's, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I've done, I've done this, to, I've done this a hundred times, right, I still, often, right, will miss a step, like I was just getting ready to do, I was getting ready to throw the air filter on, but before you throw the air filter on, uh, you want to check your radio and set your radio up. And you need to be able to look down into the carb throat for that. So let me go get my radio. Uh, this, I believe, is the exact same carburetor that was on the engine that was just in it. So this should be pretty close. All right, so I got it on my Kyosho MP9. Let me go ahead and turn this on. And looks like do you have to adjust this a touch. You want the the spring to have some tension on it but you don't want it to be super tight it, the spring was a little too tight where it was uh, and this outside collar uh, you want it to have just a tiny gap like enough for maybe a credit card or you know, like half a credit card's worth of a gap all right so uh, and you know what? I'm going to run a 7 millimeter Venturi in here. Should I start with the 6.5? Or should I hop right up and start with a 7? What do you think? I'm running... I ran a 7 in the uh, 21AO. Let me see if I got one of these style in here. Go ahead. You don't want your uh, servos just sitting uh, on. It's not good for them. 
Uh, I got a seven and a half here. Should we go for it, right? We're trying to go. You know what? No, I don't. I, I want it to. I want it to have the same venturi as the twenty-one AO, so that I can gauge it uh, against that. You know what I mean? So yeah, let me go ahead and grab the seven millimeter venturi off the twenty-one AO. You know what? These look. These look like they're the same style. Let me check this real quick. <clears throat> these, I believe, are GRP Venturi's. I'm not positive. Uh, a lot of them are marked, I thought I saw. Maybe not. None of them marked. Uh, you can kind of look at the... Yeah, that looks like a eight. That doesn't. Is that a seven? Uh, where is my? Let's see here. We still haven't replaced the battery in here yet. That's a seven and a half, or seven point three five. Yeah, seven point four nine. Yeah, that's a seven and a half. So, is that a 7? Where's... Those look the same. It's a 6 and a half. So, no... Alright, so I gotta grab the 7 out of the SH. Give me one sec. Of course, that's the one that's in it, I got all these seven five six zero oh, six five. Yeah, the seven comes in it. So that's the one I ran in it when it came stock. Come on now, get off of there. Seven point oh. So yeah, I'm gonna run the same same size Venturi as I ran. And the 21 AO, whoa, so I can gauge uh, the difference between the two. <laughs> All right, seven millimeter Venturi. The heck is that? There's like a something in there. That looks like a scratch. Guess so. See that little dot in there? Don't know. Oop. I am butterfingers today. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. It's just something to to bug me. That's all it is. Now what the heck? Really? Lordy. All right. <clears throat> All right. Seven millimeter Venturi in there. Finally. Put that six and a half in there. And I'll deal with that later. Holy smokes. All right. I got the, video, the Venturi that I'm going to be running in it. So now let me see. Uh, that idle gap is a bit big. Let me lower that a bit. <laughs> That's looking all right to start for the idle gap. Yeah, I like it to start somewhere around there. Now I have to reset my throttle arm here. Alright, so with my idle gap where I want it, I have my throttle set to where at neutral, right? There's just an ever slight gap 
between this grub screw and the arm. There's just a teeny gap in between those two. That is at uh, idle. So now I want to uh, check my travel. I want the arm, I want the servo to pull the arm just to the uh, the opening of the Venturi and no more. So let me show you what it's doing right now. Let me see if I can get you a view in there. All right, there you go. So as you can see, as I open this throttle, I can open it right there, as soon as the slide disappears, right? That is as far as I want to open. If you can see, watch. I have more. I can. I have more throttle after that, so I don't want that. I want it set to pull exactly to where the slide disappears at the edge of the venturi, and no more. So I'm going to go ahead and set that now. I'm going to set my travel on my throttle. On the high, it's at 77 right now. I'm going to lower that down a bit. So now, you see when I pull it fully open, so that's fully open, you can still see some of the slide, right? So that's not enough. So what I do now is, I hold that throttle fully open, I look down in there, and I slowly... Dial up that number until I just see the slide disappear right on the edge. One more click, boom. To where now I got the th throttle wide open and as you can see, looking at it dead straight down, you cannot see the slide. It has just disappeared. So my throttle is set perfect the throttle is set i have my full range right my full range of my finger is the range of my throttle and no more so i open my throttle fully it goes right to the edge of that venturi right if so if i had let's say i took this out and put a 7.5 millimeter venturi in there this would not open all the way because it is set to open up just to the edge of this 7 millimeter Venturi. All right. Brakes look okay. I could just worry about that at the track. I just wanted to set up my throttle. So now uh, I've got, let me go ahead and kill this. Kill, oh. Lock that in, back out of there. All right, now I can kill the radio. So now you see how I got this set up? I got my throttle arm perfectly straight. Oh, last step, turn. You know what, the carburetor looks about perfect right where it is. See how this is a nice straight line right there? Uh, I can now leave that carburetor white right where it is uh, because that they make sure it's good and snug, good and snug. So that carburetor is locked in place. It's the the throttle arm is being pulled nice and straight. It's being pulled nice and level, not pulled up or pulled down. I have it set on my radio to open just to the edge of the venturi, no more. Uh, now all I do need to do is just throw my uh, air filter on here. And this air filter uh, is been used, but it certainly was nowhere near uh, dirty to where I had to clean it. So I will be putting it right back on. It's got one or two runs on it, but you can see it's still really clean. Just make sure that there's no dust or dirt in that uh, elbow there. All right, let's throw that on. Throw it in its little mount. Grab me a 
body clip to hold it in place. And grab a zip tie to go around the base. And right down to the right. Nice and tight. Snips. All right, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, ready to run. Got uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, air filters on. Fuel tubing is set. Pipes in place. Uh, it's ready for testing. Uh, ready to throw on the starter box. You know what? Is there fuel in there? Just for poops and giggles, right? Just because uh, we're in a funny mood today. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. That engine's been totally refurbished, right? No, uh... It needed pinched, it needed new bearings, it you know, needed all kinds of stuff. So, I'm just curious. I wonder if it'll fire right up. I'm just wondering. Let's, let's see. Starter box on. Let's see. Can we line up? plug if uh, let me kill this box uh, da, 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 da. plug let's see what we got handy uh, da, 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 da. let's see that all right so that one works let's throw this in You, you were worried there for a second, weren't you? All right, let's see. Make sure she's good and primed. to fire there I never, uh, I 
have no idea what the needles are set on this thing. I probably should have uh, looked at it a little bit more. Let me see. So this thing is set nowhere near where the other one was. Holy smokes. Low end needle is way out. Let me set it to like a uh, kind of like a base needle style of setting here. Is that all the way in? No. That's all the way in? Flush? Won't go anymore. Odd. Maybe that was why uh, it was hard to prime. The thing was really closed. messing with it I want to do right now get a good mess with it a bit maybe uh, that, that high needle is odd <laughs> it's like it's really uh, lean as soon as you get any fuel in it it burns it right up Alright, last little shot. I'm done messing with it. <laughs> closer to where it needs to be over here.
top end. Anyways, she'll run, I think. The needles were way off. Uh, I think she'll run. Just, uh, I think the needles right now are really close. Uh, top end here's a little rich. But yeah, I got, I got the bottom needle close to where it needs to be. Let's turn that off, yeah. Uh, and uh, like I said, I hit a top needle was a little rich, so I lean that up. I think right now it's it's a good uh, starting point right here. Uh, should be able to take it out and go from here and uh, get her running. All right, this is a long one. Take it easy. See y'all next time. Have a great night.